found this book, the, the novel, The Graduate, and you had optioned it for, I believe, $1,000. Yep. And after you had optioned that book, um, you had found Mike Nichols to possibly direct. Yes. However, at the time, Mike Nichols, I believe, was more known as a stage performer with Elaine May. He had maybe directed one he was a Broadway perform- play. He was, he was basically a performer, yes. He had done one play on Broadway. So what inspired you to go after Mike Nichols and believe in him that he could execute a film? I always loved Mike Nichols and Elaine May's humor on stage. <clears throat> it was mordant. It was very funny, but had a real sharp edge to it. The Graduate, I thought, was very funny, but the book, but nervous-making. Indeed, the movie, he has some of that, too. He did one play on Broadway, Barefoot in the Park, starring Bob Redford, a Neil Simon comedy. And I saw the play, and it was just oozing smart direction, smart detail, good with the characters, everything. So on my blink hunch, I sent him the book. I didn't know him. I, I sent it to his agent. I picked up who's his agent here. Please give this to Mike Nichols. Uh, he did. And then I was in New York and I returned to my hotel one night and the front desk gave me a message said, you got a telephone call from a Mr. Nichols. He said he likes the book. So I called him. We met the next day and I said, I told him the truth. I said, uh, I'm thrilled you like this. I think you're perfect for it. I have no deal, no anything. I, ha- I have this book under option, and now I have you. So I propose that I try and get it set up as a movie, and that you and I be partners. We split everything down the middle. Whatever money comes in for the two of us, we split down the middle, and we share creative control. Yeah. The rest, as they say, is movie history. And then uh, I believe Colder Willingham was the first screenwriter on the project. Yeah, that project. was my brilliant idea. Uh, Mike Nichols was in New York, lived in New York, worked in New York. The financier, Joseph E. Levine, lived in New York. Schlockmeister of the world, but he was my Schlockmeister. So. Yeah, the graduate, I guess, was a bit of a change of pace for... Uh, Joe Levine, like he had really done a lot of like, you know, Hercules and genre. Well, he did. He was a distributor. He would go to Italy, buy Hercules Unchained, plaster his name over it, and sell it. Or even dubbed it with American actors. He was was last stop in the line. Every studio turned me down. Not once, but twice. No one thought it was funny. No one thought it was good. I wrote that in my book, which you've evidently read. Uh, So it was Joe Levine or nothing. Yeah. And... uh, he was much better than nothing. He put us the money and the deal I negotiated to give Mike and myself total or creative control, which is nice to have. So I know that um, Calder Willingham had written... Oh, Calder uh, Willingham. Um, so uh, I knew his work yeah. uh, as a novelist and uh, as a playwright. He did End as a Man or did the screenplay of it. Uh, I think Sam Spiegel produced it, The Redoubtable. At any rate, uh, Calder Willingham, his uh, his novels seemed to me that he'd be good casting for The Graduate. More importantly, he was in New York, and I thought he and Mike could work together. The financier was there. I lived in Los Angeles, worked in Los Angeles. So I chose him for that reason. Except Mike Nichols never even met him. Uh, when uh, Robbie Burns, the best laid plans of mice and men off gang of leg, don't work out. Yeah. Uh, so I did all the work with Willingham. And he delivered a script that was vulgar. It's surprising me in that the graduate for its time early 1960s, mid-1960s, uh, was provocative sexually. Calder Willingham added to it and made it vulgar. So I didn't even show it to Mike. I said, Mike, oh, no, I did wrong, 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 memory. Uh, I gave the script to Mike and said, I don't like it. I don't think you will either. Yeah. And he agreed. He said, no, he didn't like it. 
and then he recommended Buck Henry. And uh, Buck Henry wrote the script without ever seeing uh, the Willingham script. Mike did most of the work with Calder, although Mike got so busy directing one Broadway show after another that I also worked with Buck. And uh, when it finally came down to the credits, I said only Buck should have the credit. Uh, and I, as professional courtesy, I picked up the fellow telephone, spoke to a caller and said, Calder, I want to give you the courtesy of letting you know you're not getting any credit on this, it's all Buck's script. Yeah. And Calder Willingham said, as many writers probably would, I was naive, said, I'm going to protest it with the Writers Guild. I said, but Buck never even saw your script. He said, I'm still going to protest it. Well, he protested it successfully. He, uh, he, he, he gets not only credit, he gets in the first position ahead of Buck. And in showbiz, uh, the position is very important. Yeah. Uh, who goes first? In fact, when I was an agent, someone taught me the following to say, uh, what, is uh, position important? Have you ever heard of Barnum and Bailey, which in those days the big circus names? And he says, Barnum and Bailey, sure. And you say, well, what do you know about Bailey? Meaning his name went second, you know nothing about him. Because P.T. Barnum was the famous uh, public face and name of that team. <laughs> Sorry, it took all the time to tell that story, but it was sort of charming uh, at the time. Now it's, so really uh, none of Calder Willingham's material that he wrote was ever in The Graduate. It was all nothing, Buck Henry's script. Except the reason that occurred is, as producer, I imposed on Willingham the structure of the book and say this scene from the book, this scene from the book, this scene from the book. When Mike Nichols worked with Mark Henry, he would say this scene from the book, this scene from the book, this scene from the book. And or Buck Henry in his own wisdom said, I'll use this, this, this. Yeah. So the structure I imposed on Willingham and that Mike imposed or Buck chose uh, for his version were so much the same, Willingham was there first and whoever gets there first gets the first credit. It's a coming of age story except that brilliant tag where their faces go dead on the bus means maybe he didn't yet come of age. Yeah. And I believe that was even an accident um, when it occurred. You thought what? Well, from what I read, that was an accident. Um, yeah. Yeah. That when it occurred, yeah. it was they, they didn't know what to do at that point, Dustin Hoffman and Catherine Ross. Yeah, they just that, sort of froze. Yeah. And yes, that, that's correct. It became correct. a you yeah. know, great moment, one but of the most a, memorable so, moments. So it was an accident. Yeah. But, but it was a, a fortuitous accident that the director was smart enough to utilize and leave in. And as... Elia Gazan, Gabs Gazan, said to me directly in my face, we were talking once, he said, any good actor will know the character and the role better than me, Kazan, the director. Yeah. And who knows what, uh, you might interview Dustin Hoffman, if you would agree, and say, ask him what went through his mind at that moment. Yeah. Oh, that was... or, or wrong, forget at that moment, maybe in preparation for that scene. Yeah. Well, that's what was uh, what is still great about Mike Nichols is that he gives so much freedom to the actors, and not only freedom, but um, for what I understand, the the graduate had this long rehearsal period, and so much was discovered in the rehearsal period that ended up going into the finished film. Uh, well, any good director knows how to extract the best from the actor to add to his own or her own directorial interpretation. Yeah. yeah, he gives them freedom to discover, but uh, Mike is, is funny. He's, the one reason he's so talented and smart is he gives freedom, but within the constraints of what he wants to accomplish from a scene, from an actor, from the overall story. Yeah. Keeping everybody within the same well, movie, uh, as opposed to letting that, them roam if, off to uh, 
If you know. memory serves, 10 yeah. minutes ago I said he would quote random as the enemy. Yeah. Well, that applies to everything, how his point of view of a scene.